On this episode, people, we have a real treat for you. Ooh, ooh, what's that? Well, I don't want to spoil anything, so I, I'm not no, going to... No, 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 wait, what is it? What is it? What is it? Okay, well, we might have some news about this. This It's a little upstart called Apple in their products. Um, but we do that every week. And we're going to do it again on this episode of The Infinite Loop Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Infinite Loop Show, episode number 23. I'm Michael Gaines. And I'm Casey Coglin. <laughs> Hi, Casey Coglin. How are you? I'm good. Twenty three episodes. I Come. know, and you're and you're still hanging on. We're so big. We're getting so <laughs> old. You know, we got hair growing in weird places. Our voices are getting deeper. No, that doesn't happen until changes are happening. 40 or 50. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Unless maybe you've got some problems that you want to tell everybody about. Nope. Nope. Nerp. Nope. Nope. Derp. Nope. <laughs> Well, there are some things growing in some weird places, <laughs> but that's a really bad segue because I'm actually wrong. I don't even know what I'm talking about there, but we do have some news. We have... <laughs> Why are you uh -huh. laughing? Okay. Um, no, uh, no reason. No reason Not at all? Not laughing at you okay. at all. <laughs> um, there are some people that figured out how to use Passbook on iOS 6. Yes. Yes. I Finally, these this. people are not me because I just keep looking at this JPEG of an app going, nope, beta 2, still not working. <laughs> I don't know, derp a derp, go on with my life. Uh, there are some people that figure out there's a, there's a website. Now, first off, I don't know if this website is legit. So yeah, we when they show it in the video, you know, it's like, oh, all you have to do to, you know, change up your flight times and everything is edit some HTML. <laughs> oh, okay, because everyone can do that. Well, it's not it's that too, but there's a um, there's a website called PassSource. Uh, it's PassSource.com, and mm -hmm. what you do is you open that on your iOS six device, and it allows you to start adding things to your. Right. Uh, you have to be passport. running iOS 6 first on your on your iOS device. Mm -hmm. And then you go to this website and it will bring up kind of the configuration menu for the actual app. Which is great. Except I hope that nobody's taking this data and, and grabbing it. I mean, is it secure? Because not for nothing, but... There's right. no way that's secure. Probably. Yeah, probably not. Not that I really care if anybody has my gym membership number or anything like that. <gasps> but... <Shit. laughs> People are going to be going to 20-hour fitness on my dime. I'm going to walk in. They're going to be like, you're already here. I'm going to be like, Derp. damn you, passbook. <laughs> um, but it does allow you to start using passbook on your iOS 6 device. And maybe once I get around to trying it, I'll, I'll do that. But I haven't yeah, done that so yet. So the website, all it does is allows you to actually create the cards that go into Passbook. Mm -hmm. So then it saves it to the actual app, which right now, if you don't go to the site, it just goes to like a splash screen yeah. and that's it. But if you go to the site, make some cards with some like, you can just leave some defaults and it just makes some dummy cards. Then you go back to the app. These cards are actually populated in the app, and then mm -hmm. the app actually becomes functional. Yeah. But to edit anything, if you just leave it all the default, then it's got like Johnny Appleseed and Tim Cook, you know, default info on the cards. Um, if you want to actually edit that and have some fun with it, you've got to go back to the site. And like I said in the beginning, they have these uh, text areas with the raw HTML. Mm -hmm. uh, so you kind of have to know your way around that. Yeah. Uh, they also have a library so you can create your own stuff. Is that the same thing as what you're talking about? Because um, there's probably. the website and then there's a lib that I think you can run in the background. Oh, okay. They didn't. Um, I didn't see that. Uh, I'm sorry. Not in the background. The back end of your own website so that you can add, you can have people create um, these things for past, uh, past book on their own. Uh, mm -hmm. So right now, I'm not really quite sure if I'm, I would even try this. I'm looking at it now. Here's store card, um, event, coupon. This is at uh, passsource.com. Mm -hmm. um, 
Here, let me try one. Store card. Relevant. Oh, I see. And it gives you the longitude, latitude, personal accounts, Bay Rose Coffee, logo text. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, I see how this works. And then you create it. Oh, and then you add it to Passbook. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So if you have iOS 6 and you want to get Passbook working, go to PassSource.com. Give it a shot. Again, I'm saying uh, it may or may not be secure. You may or may not care. And the people working the back end may or may not be saving all this info for you. But really, if you're running iOS 6 at this point, chances are you're either a developer and you know this stuff already. Mm Mm-hmm. Or you're a hacker, in which case you probably know this stuff already. Yeah. But that's so. not the cool thing. What I've been saying... What's the cool thing, Mike? <laughs> the, the cool thing... I've been saying this for a while, is that I was hoping that the next iPhone would have an NFC chip. Uh-huh. And what NFC stands for is not a chip that allows you to watch the NFC football. New fun <laughs> conference. No. <laughs> NFC is only one conference of the NFL. Um <laughs> Fudge cookies. No. You want to keep trying? Oh. No. It stands Newly for- functional classics. No. <laughs> <laughs> it stands for near field communication. It's essentially... Oh. It's, a, it's a chip that communicates with um, an NFC receiver, let's say, in a store. So let's say you set up your account at Starbucks and you have it communicate with this NFC chip, you don't even have to whip out your phone. You don't even have to whip out your card. They'll already know who you are. You don't even have to whip out anything else. Anything else, really. You don't. You just leave it all in, <laughs> very deep down inside. And I've wanted this for a while because it, it's just convenient to walk up to a, to, um, to like a register at my store. They have the, um, like the, the special cards and such. They could just mm-hmm. say, oh, here is Michael Gaines. He's um, this is customer number whatever, and automatically just do the card for me, so I don't have to take it yeah. out of my wallet all the time. So it's kind of like you're so, running a tab constantly, sure. everywhere you go. Actually, that that's another good use for it. Is that if you go somewhere, yeah, there's running a tab. There's there's doing the cards. I could walk into my gym and the site. Well, here you are. Thank you. See ya. Um, and I don't have to show my card. I mm-hmm. love that. I love NFC. Mm-hmm. And um, the rumor is that the iPhone 5 will have it. Um, there are rumors floating around since yesterday saying that the iPhone 5 will have an NFC chip. That would be pretty amazing. It would be amazing. And I just hope that it does. And I hope they do it right. I'm sure they'll do it right. Well, it's um, Apple. Yeah. And of course, it's going to take an NFC reader on the store's end. Right, uh, yeah. So even happen. if they do put it in, it might still take a while for this to really catch on because mm-hmm. stores have to implement it on the other end. Right. So, you know, great if it's in the iPhone 5 and we're all running around looking for <laughs> receivers to actually use it with. No. Do you have NFC? Please, I want to try it. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'll just buy this Coke then. <laughs> all right. So... Uh, Speaking of iOS 6, there's uh, some new stuff in beta 2 that was just pushed to developers. Is there anything uh, earth-shattering new? Not really. No. There, there's this rundown on, what site was it? 9 to you 5 probably Mac. Have that. 9 to 5 Mac. There's a rundown of iOS 6 beta 2 roundup, you know, everything that's new. And, and I installed it, what, Tuesday morning as soon as it came out. Really, I didn't see anything that was new. And everything that they have in that roundup was either there in beta 1 mm-hmm. or has even been there in iOS 5. Um, so I really didn't see anything in their roundup that was new specifically to beta 2. Mm-hmm. So nothing earth-shattering. No, no, I mean, there might be some little tiny tweaks and stuff, but there's still like a lot... Like, it still feels beta overall, Mm -hmm. like the entire interface. Um, I have a lot of freezes um, and slowdowns when I'm just doing normal stuff and uh, a lot of, like, interface overlays, Mm -hmm. Um, one of which is actually in the live version of the new app that just came out, which is kind of crazy. It's... The interface is actually tweaking out like a beta version, but it's 
a live full version. Okay. So we're still waiting on a thing. If there's anything internal, I haven't seen anything on it. And if there was, I, I couldn't say anything about it anyway. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, no, there's nothing new. What, uh, what am I saying? Oh, totally. <laughs> I don't know what, uh, what we're just what? reporting what yeah. other sites say. <laughs> I don't know what uh, nobody nobody here has beta. That's not no no. That's not. Mm -mm. Derp. <laughs> Apple released a new universal app for podcasts specifically. Yes. And I thought this was interesting because they always had it in the iTunes app. However, they did have it sort of buried. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's even on the desktop. Podcasts have always been kind of like a stepchild mm -hmm. within the app. Yeah. I mean, even more so on iOS, but even within the desktop version of iTunes, I felt like they're just kind of on the back burner. And that's always been the case. You just kind of, okay, yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. And people were saying that because Apple is doing this, that they're sort of spawning off podcasts and they just don't want anything to do with it anymore because it's not on iTunes. I see it differently. Yeah. I. I think it's the reverse. Mm -hmm. They're trying to really promote it because, I mean, podcasts, you know, became a medium of of media because of Apple mm -hmm. primarily, mm -hmm. you know, and and it's really, I mean, I think the gra the grand majority of people who listen and do podcasts, they're distributed and subscribed to and followed and and searched for mm -hmm. primarily through iTunes. Mm -hmm. I'd be willing to bet that most people wouldn't know any other place to get podcasts. Well, there are so, some there are places like Stitcher. We we yeah. we put our stuff up on Stitcher. Stitcher starting that, to get some traction. But really it it's starting to, but how long has Stitcher been around compared to the the overall time that podcasts have been a thing. All right. Well, what I'm doing here, I'm logging into our account, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at our stats. And here, let me see. And there should totally be a bump today because I know everybody out there is going to be downloading <laughs> this podcast app That's and right. subscribing to the Infinite Loop Show. <laughs> so here we go. Um, iTunes. Seventy-eight percent of our what? of of our listeners, oh, yeah. yeah, refers. Oh wait, they do it. Well, yeah, so here we go. The other, um, what are the other options, though? Well, there are some other ones like Stitcher and everything. You know, we we get very few track, from that here. Stitch. You track um, YouTube. Uh, let me see. We here's what we have. We have iTunes, Apple Core Media, which is essentially the same thing. It's like if if people used yeah. um website mozilla instacast firefox eyecatcher shifty jelly pocket casts never heard of that okay we have five zoom listeners <laughs> all right we have five listen to those five people that are listening to this on the zoom we love you yes you are clearly bi curious and uh, <laughs> keep it going it's it's all good we accept you and i i support your right to marry and adopt <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we uh, without giving out numbers, um, our percentage is um, seventy eight percent on iTunes. Um, the rest of so the majority of the rest are in Apple Core Media, Mo Mozilla. Then it drops to Instacast, Firefox, iCatcher, and such. So um, with Zoom, so being you like probably don't even track iTunes, but I'd imagine most people are probably uh, getting it uh, getting it through the podcast yeah. either through our site or it looks like a fat majority through iTunes. Yeah. Yeah. Which supports my case and I win. <laughs> Do you ever lose? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Do you? When I'm arguing with my husband, constantly. Oh, losses. that's a whole different thing. We're not talking about <laughs> that. <laughs> um Let me see. Uh let me just look at another one. So that that was actually for this week in track. If mm -hmm. I look at, here, let me look at the stats for the last Warcast episode. Um, if I go to refers. Plug, plug, plug. Okay, m wait, oh wait, no, that's the wrong one. That's refers, not user agents. User agents, oh, we've got like 92% in iTunes. Oh, that's weird that we'd be doing a Mac show and it's primarily iTunes. That's super weird. <laughs> Very weird. Wait, do people listen to us on the Zoom? Wow, there, we got 12 listeners on Warcast for the Zoom. Oh, we got, wait, we got a few on Winamp? 
Oh my god, there's like way Whoa. down the list. Zoom and win out. Listen to this show. Wow. That's really cool. All right. Anyway, getting away from that for a second, I sort of sidetracked on so, that. So I think the main thing is obviously new app and it's front and center on the app store if you go mm -hmm. there um, either on the iPad or iPhone. This new podcast app from Apple, it's free to download and pretty much splits all of your podcast subscriptions out into another mm -hmm. app. Kind of like they did when iOS first came out. They split videos out into its own little app. Yes. Which a lot of people kind of felt was like almost ghettoizing those things because most people went to um, iTunes or the music app to mm -hmm. look for that media and it was often at its own little corner over there. So now podcasts will be too. Mm -hmm. But much like the iBooks app, it has a built-in link to the uh, iTunes store, which it, like kind of spins around like the iBooks app mm -hmm. does yep. uh, when you press catalog. And then you can go search or see what's featured and subscribe or download specific episodes right there and then. And then that'll be in your library. Um, a lot of people were saying, especially on the iPad, if you if you're a producer and you know, I looked really uh, robotic there, um, if you're uh, a podcast producer like we are, mm -hmm. you might want to look into if you haven't already upgrading your cover art for the yeah, um, especially on the iPad, I think they were suggesting. Uh, DPI of sixteen hundred square. Yeah, so that's I don't know about that. Large. That's that's pretty large. So, but I mean, if they're you know gunning for the iPad, the Retina Display iPad, mm -hmm. then that kind of makes sense. Well, all right. So, I'm gonna bring this up on the iPad because I just had it up before. Uh, the because I I put this together myself. The the icon for Warcast is four hundred by four hundred. I don't remember what the one for the Infinite Loop show is, but you give that me can't look good. The can't I do. No, I it can't. looks fine. That's what I'm saying. On the iPhone, maybe. No. On the iPhone, when you when you actually hit play, and oh, it hit comes play. up. Yeah. No. 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 When you're just searching for it, great. When you actually hit play on the cover art, and it goes full screen. There's oh, no, I didn't know it did that because I just did a search. Oh, okay. Well, let me yeah. try that. Here, here's episode twenty-two. So I'll pick that. Here, and I'll and where's the the play button? Because I want to see how bad this looks. It has to be downloaded. Oh well, I'll I'll just let it. <laughs> so it In plays. Oh, here. here and you play it here. The download button. Yeah. Right now, I just get a QuickTime logo with the. Um, I don't know if I. Okay, so, oh, this is super cool. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't quite go full screen. Um, it goes almost full screen. Okay, and then they have some kind of crazy little screen elements in the background. It's kind of dark, but if you actually have one, then you can look closely. Um, they have, like, a old-style tape and reel running in the background behind the cover art. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I see that. Um, and it actually, it's paused right now, but it'll actually run through. And there's like some dials and a little turtle and rabbit dial like on the side. Interesting. It's, they put uh, some thought clearly into this. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, your cover art is definitely blown up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but not full screen, but still on a retina display that has to be pretty big. The interesting... So if you don't want it to be crap. No, no, no. No, I was going to say the interesting thing about it is that they recommend 144 by 144 um, for your preview. Oh. I think your large one can be, I want to say there was a 400 by 400 limit, but I may be wrong on that. I don't remember seeing something that required you to do or even them asking you to do something large. Mm -hmm. um, large. Well, the quest log. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> our other show. Well, no, it's looks not a spoiler. Pretty, looks pretty pixelated, which I expected because that was a low res mm -hmm. um, image. But the infinite loop shows looks good. 
kind of. All right. Well, if you don't look too closely, it looks good. It's not bad. I <laughs> love the reel to reel look. Yeah, no, what they got going on in the background, and if you tap, so you if you tap on the episode, then it blows up the cover art and it starts playing. On that blown up cover art, if you tap it again, it'll slide up to the top, yeah. and then you can get a full view of that reel to reel with little pulleys and the time code and everything in the background. That's really slick. There's a little. Oh, you can actually adjust that turtle rabbit dial. So that's Andy? kind of like the Audible app where maybe you can fast forward the time of mm. so that it'll play in like two times or half time, you know, if you're in a hurry and you can comprehend that. Nice. Then awesome. Very cool. So we're very excited about this. It's it's nice that we'll have a place where we won't get buried. Right. Anymore. I think all podcasters are excited about this. And if you're listening to this on iTunes, please give us a positive review. Yeah, we would like some <laughs> reviews. Yeah, we uh, would like some awesome reviews. We just want some... any reviews. I don't care. I'm not picky. <laughs> any any reviews? Say like, you know, Casey's super hot or Casey's kind of hot or even just, you know, Casey just looked good on this one day, but the rest of the day she's meh. Wow. You know, or like, I just love Casey and she's just like the center of my universe. I mean, any of that would be fine. They're really. called stalkers and I don't know if you <laughs> want to hear from them. Um, I'm not giving out my fine friend's, you know, address or anything, so. I have it. Yeah, thanks, Stalker. Uh, Langley in the chat room says more cleavage. Um, uh, oh, well, I will work on that. Thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Put that in the review and give us five stars and uh, maybe. <laughs> Just kidding. The Nexus Q was announced today. This is Google's $300 answer to Apple TV. Yeah. Yeah, so I wrote in the show notes Nexus Q for 300 bucks is Google think we're stupid. Here's the thing. If they want to compete with Apple TV, okay, that's fine. What I don't understand is why this thing is $300. It essentially does exactly the same thing that Apple TV does. Different well, ecosystem. Maybe we're, maybe we're missing something. Maybe there's like a another $200 worth of functionality like swept under the carpet or underneath or something. I don't know. Maybe we're... I we're watched the presentation. I read... I can't even tell you how many read articles on things. this. I read all the things, and there was well, nothing about it that said this does something ass kickingly more than Apple TV. Well, that's just fitting. And so it's three hundred bucks, and I don't get it. I'm gonna go buy three Apple TVs instead. Because <laughs> I mean, not only that, what's even worse is that you can get a PlayStation Three cheaper. Oh, yeah. And that'll stream your stuff. Oh, shh. Don't tell him that. <laughs> and it plays games. You can play Skyrim on it. Oh, I need to play some more Skyrim. Yeah. DLC came out yesterday. But that's well, a whole... for 360. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. The PS3 and the, uh, the PC uh, DLC Don't comes out in a, a couple weeks. But uh, I... All right. So anyway, you can you control it using a tablet. If you want, you can hook it up to a. You don't even have to hook it up to a television. Okay, well, you don't have to hook up the Apple TV to a television either. You can control Apple TV with your computer or your tablet. Yeah. But so, what's the point then? Well, you're right. I mean, well, the point is, is that if you want to, let's say, just play music and not necessarily have it connected to a television. Oh, and not you just needing, have it like connected to a receiver, then yeah. you could airplay some. Yeah. Okay. Sure, you could do that. So I'm a little confused about the $300 price tag. Uh, the device itself looks like a Death Star. Awesome. Yeah. I that's don't know awesome. if that's a subtle hint or what, but... 200 bucks for design and then 100 bucks for functionality. There you go. <laughs> and they're, they're saying a lot that, oh, we made it in the United States. Well, is that why it's $200 uh, well, more? Well, there you go. Yeah. Clearly, uh, American labor is not cheap. So... <sighs> So they're that. steering way clear of those Foxconn <laughs> articles and debacles. Well, what also happened today, Google I.O., is that uh, Google announced the Nexus 7. 
Yes. So and is this their new phone? No, this is a tablet. It's a seven inch tablet running Android Jelly Bean. Oh. Now, Jelly Bean is not 5.0, it's 4.1. Okay, if that doesn't confuse you more, I don't know what will. I think it's seven because it's seven inches. Yes, yes. Uh, so, it, in my opinion, I think that that allows, um, or I should say, it disallows Google to name anything else like Nexus Two, Nexus Three, because when the Nexus came out, the phone, you figured the next one will be the Nexus Two, the next one will mm -hmm. be the Nexus Three. Now they're calling this tablet the Nexus Seven, and yeah. it messes up the whole numbering scheme. Here's the thing. It runs Android 4.1, Jelly Bean. Okay. I saw some hands-on videos of it. Looks okay. It's pure Android. It is not uh, one of those screwed up versions that you buy like when you go to, a, when you go to Sprint or Verizon and, and it's all yeah. borked up. So that's, that's fine. Um, here are some things about it that I found that they were interesting. You can only get an eight gig. Although the eight gig one is is one ninety nine, and the and the sixteen gig is two forty nine. Okay, that's fine. That's it's competitive. Not bad. That's yeah, fine. Super competitive. But one of the big things that all the Android fans always say is, "Bert, the uh, iPad doesn't have an SD card slot." Well, guess what? Now this one doesn't either. The Nexus <gasps> Seven doesn't have an SD that's card crazy. slot. Oh my now god! What are you gonna do? Now what are all what are the we gonna do with that gonna SD do? cards? <laughs> oh wait. It, I'm just saying that if you're gonna take a point and make it such a big deal, and and now Androids or and Google says, away. yeah, they're like, well, there's no SD card slot. Well, why not? Because this thing is is pretty thick. It's pretty. It's because it's Google 300. hates its users. <laughs> no, right. I'm just saying that that maybe uh, the SD card slot was just proven to not really be that important. And maybe Ooh, they took it out because that. they realized that some people just, or a lot of people just aren't using it. Um, by the way, this is built by Asus. Um, yeah. So my, yeah. my first question was like, hey, maybe they're finally putting Motorola mobility to good use? No. No. Uh, no. This is using NVIDIA. Uh, yeah. This is the, uh, what, the quad core, quad, quad core. Everybody's going NVIDIA this year. This is kind of uh, NVIDIA's yeah. year, suddenly. <laughs> Except Linux. <laughs> well, whatever. Yeah. Um, um, the other weird thing about this device is that there's no camera in the back. Now, okay. Let me talk a little bit about how many people I've seen using the iPad as a camera in the wild. A lot. Oh, I was just at a graduation the other day. Lots of people with iPads using them as cameras. What a bunch of weirdos. Lots. <laughs> um, so it's it's a little bizarre that this thing wouldn't have a camera in the rear. But but then then I think about the market now. Are they competing with the their, themselves with the kin, uh, the Kindle Fire? Yeah, this is a lot like the uh, Surface tablet, where Google is pretty much competing against all their OEMs, the mm -hmm. Fire and the uh, the Nook, which is also running a version of Android. You know, all those low, low price point tablets that Apple doesn't give a crap about, mm -hmm. and they shouldn't. I mean, they're doing just fine in the premium market, you mm -hmm. know? Here's what I'm thinking. You've got Apple on top as far as tablets. We're just strictly talking tablets. You've got Apple on top with their tablets and the iPads. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to be interested in seeing over the next few months is what happens between Android and Microsoft. I'll tell you why. Because watching the presentation from Google today, I was actually pretty impressed with the fact that they have this entire ecosystem. And they except make it, for the desktop. Oh, except, well, no, I'll, I'll get to that in a they second. They still don't have any kind of thing right. on the desktop. They don't have a desktop, but they have this whole in the cloud ecosystem where you don't need a desktop machine to do these things that you that you want to do. People like you and me that do the hardcore processing, the video editing, the the pot, I mean, granted, you can do a podcast editing on the iPad. We talked about that last week. You don't need to have a desktop machine to do a podcast. You, you do need or a simple podcast. You do need a desktop machine for a whole bunch of effects and mixers and things like that. So maybe Google knows a little bit more than Microsoft does. Well, I... Because Microsoft's <laughs> presentation of the Surface last week 
really made me wonder if Microsoft even gets it. And so this is what I'm predicting, is that within six to 12 months, Apple's still gonna be on top. And I'm not saying that just because we're doing a Mac show. I'm just saying Apple's gonna be on top because they know what they're doing. Google, I believe, is actually gonna surpass Microsoft as far as users go. And I think that the Surface is gonna do extraordinarily well in enterprise. That's what I think. And the reason why is because the gamers aren't gonna buy the Surface. Mom and no. dad aren't gonna buy the Surface. No. Um, grandparents it and everybody. Might, maybe. I mean, they're gonna to have to make some serious inroads because the iPad is already there in mm -hmm. enterprise. It's, yes. it's already successful in enterprise. I would even go to say iPad is more successful right now in enterprise than iPhones. Oh, yeah, for sure. And the medical field. Um, don't, don't discount the medical field because a lot of people don't talk about it. But. Medical, um, what, uh, like air transportation, mm -hmm. um, retail, a retail. lot. Uh, was it last Friday I went to a, a beer tasting room they had full-on registers with no um, computer or monitor or anything. Mm -hmm. It was literally the cash drawer mm -hmm. with an iPad on, like, this arm that stuck out. Oh, okay. And, that, and then they had, like, a, a third-party kind of card reader down at the bottom, but that's it. Hmm. The iPad was their entire POS. And I know there's a hamburger joint down here called um, Stackers, I mm -hmm. think. That does the same thing. You do your ordering. You sit down at a table and you do your ordering through an iPad console. Mm -hmm. And everything's done through iPads. Um, there's more and more retail locations and companies that are going that way. So not just, you know, offices with cubes, you know, and, and the sales and marketing people using iPads, but all over. Mm -hmm. iPad is pretty embedded already at this point. So... I can see the Surface doing well with that, specifically because Windows and Exchange always has. Yeah. Most of these um, enterprise environments that are adopting iPads still have Windows servers, still have Exchange, still have Active Directory, uh, and they just tie everything in, mm -hmm. you know, together. And the iPad does fairly well with that, but I would have, I mean, I don't know, but I would have to imagine that the Surface tablet windows 8 would do even better with those tie-ins mm -hmm. and especially with sharepoint servers uh and all their shared docs as far as that goes mm -hmm. there was a comment that i saw on google plus today from somebody i don't remember who wrote it um it was nobody that i knew but the comment was that most people that use tablets really don't give a rat's ass about what happened to google io today and that's true <laughs> there, there are people like you and me and people that listen and everything the, yeah. We all love the iPad and, and, and we watch what happens with Google. I mean, yeah, it would be nice if I had an Android tablet just to see what it's like, but I don't want to blow, blow 400 bucks on one. No, I'm not yeah. going to buy one, but I'm not going to blow 400 bucks on something and go, eh, it's nice, and then, and then put it away. Yeah, then what are you going to do with it? Um, yeah. but, but the point is, is that all this stuff is good for the geeks and everything, but I, I, again, not saying this just because we're doing an Apple show, but I think that uh, the, the iPad is going to be on top for a while. But I, I'm going to be very yeah. interested in watching this whole Android Microsoft battle for second place, and I I really think that I, I think that Android's going to be number two. Yeah, I really maybe. do because Microsoft has just lost so much touch on. Well, they've lost a lot of time too. You know, they're just now oh, yeah. kind of getting on the ball with this whole. Um, mobile device and really kind of getting it right whereas android was was kind of late too mm -hmm. but i mean they're a lot quicker to the plate than microsoft is mm -hmm. so we'll see uh, a year from now we'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens uh yeah. i although i will say one thing i wish the surface did half the stuff the surface tab uh, the surface table did yeah i don't i want to put my drinks on this tablet and i don't think it's going <laughs> to recognize them nope it's not Unfortunately. Yeah. All right, let's move on to rapid fire. Uh, there is a June 2013 trial date for this whole Apple eBooks collusion crap. Uh, a, this is still a going year on? from now. Yeah. yeah. Well, law moves incredibly slow. So, I mean, that doesn't 
that doesn't surprise me that it's like a year later and this is just now going to trial because mm-hmm. most trials are that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I thought, because we hadn't heard a lot about it, I thought they had kind of reached a settlement or something. I didn't think they were With still going to them. trial. Yeah, but not all of them. And, and here's what I think is that a lot of people are going to waste a lot of time and money for a year yeah. putting together their cases. And I think a lot of this is just going to be a wash. Well, yeah, but a lot of lawyers will make a lot of money in the process. So that's what it's all about. Uh, uh, Apple. All right. We, we talked about this before. There's a redeem button on the uh, the, I, uh, the podcast, the app. podcast app. Some mm-hmm. people are thinking that Apple is putting that in there uh, because there's going to be like a premium podcast model. I don't think so. I think that it's just something that... That um, would be really weird because, I mean... Podcasts have been free forever. Mm -hmm. And even if it was confusing in the beginning where that podcast button said subscribe, maybe in the beginning people were confused that subscribe meant pay money. Mm -hmm. I think by now at this point, it's pretty common knowledge that when you hit that subscribe button on a podcast, it's free. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be free forever. It always has been for over, you know, six years now. Mm To all of a sudden throw in some sort of premium model or start charging for them, I would be great. I, I just that would blow my mind. Well, now, if they did some sort of subscription model, not for podcasts, but for like music or something to that effect to really compete with Spotify mm-hmm. or Last FM or you know, any of those other subscription models, then I could see it, but not for podcasts. Yeah. Um, podcasts have historically been free They're They have their own business models. Um, I have a feeling that if that redeem button is there, it may simply just be for iTunes so that if you're in the podcast app and you want to redeem a code, it's, it, there's your button. Yeah, because it's um, the same hookup. It's the same hooks to the same iTunes store. Because I, literally, when you switch over to catalog, everything looks the same as the iTunes music mm-hmm. store. Yeah. So, so I don't think that this pretty is much. What? Well, I think it's it's that when it switches over, that's probably just a like a UI view or a window to the actual store. Yeah. That they didn't actually create a new store. It's the same store. But you're only filtering podcasts. I agree. And so I don't think this is any. Nobody's going to pay for a podcast. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Um, I, I have to say, I give, I give my $2 a month to Leo. I do too. And uh, that's about Uncle it. Uncle Leo. <laughs> Uncle Leo. That's right. Um, uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm fine with doing, you know, podcasts for free. That's right. But if you want to send uh, us money. <laughs> hey. You know what? Be good. No. All right. What uh, else we got? So Google, uh, speaking of their I/O conference today, finally, finally showed off uh, an a full iPad version of the Google Plus app. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's not out yet. They said no. coming soon, and they didn't even say a release date. But this is something that I think iPad users and Google Plus people in general have been. <laughs> among other things, whining about for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And this is good because I think that the Google Plus experience could be better. Um, yes. And this goes back to the whole point about, and, and I have this this discussion slash argument with people at work, is what is the experience of running, let, let's say, a pure HTML5 website mm-hmm. on a tablet versus the ability to do whatever you want on an uh, on the iPad, and I'm not even just talking about an iPad. I shouldn't really really say that, but any kind of tablet, any kind of device, a touch device. I want to be specific about that because when you're when you're dealing with a touch device, the UI is a little different. In right, some and it's going to vary depending on the OS too. Mm-hmm. So whereas HTML5 has to be platform agnostic, if you're making an app in iOS using their library specifically, mm-hmm. you're going to have full access to everything. Yeah. I want to um, talk just real quick about something is that uh, we had a discussion uh, at work, and I'm not giving anything away here, about whether or not we're going to use HTML5 or, or create a native app. The reason why we went with a native app um, is because 
there are some things that you can't do in HTML5 that you can do with a native app. And a native app can always be updated and, and you own the dog food. You can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. The other yeah. thing is that uh, this is a bit of developer inside baseball, but I just want to mention it real quick, is that there are these, these wrappers that you can build uh, apps for multiple devices. Sort of like if anybody used WX Windows uh, to build both a Mac and a Windows app, you, you basically build it for one target or the uh, other. Yeah. Uh, you can do that, but the problem is that it's slow, it's crap, mm -hmm. and you're, you're building for on the lowest party. common denominator. Exactly, and so if you want to, it's just like porting a game from one platform to another. Mm -hmm. You have to code it for the lowest common denominator, and then, yeah, do it that way. So we like the fact that Google is making their own app and i can't wait to get my hands on it because i'll probably use it more on the ipad if it's as good looking as the iphone app then good on you <laughs> i'm excited yeah what's this about the data center in reno is there another one they're building yes so uh they're also there i mean we said months ago that they were making one in oregon mm -hmm. but now uh People are reporting, I think it was a 9 to 5 Mac, that they're also building one in Reno, Nevada. Wow. Which is, yay, we need like five more of these. I mean, keep <laughs> doing it. Apple definitely has the money. And we, you know, they if they're going to go more and more cloud-based, I mean, Siri alone needs a couple just by herself. <laughs> but iCloud for sure needs quite a few of these massive massive data centers yeah nevada definitely has the uh you know landscape to hand over to something like this so awesome the way that i see this is that they need all the data. Well, i'm the way that i know how the internet works is that you need Ooh. the low latency but is it worth building these big data centers because they already have the one in north carolina yep all right uh what what kind of lag are people in Oregon going to get if they try to connect to the data center in North Carolina? And that maybe I, I, I'm going to have to do some research as to why because they're they're building something in um, Austin, Austin, Texas. Oh, now I that, thought that was a factory though. Was it a factory? Is it a data center? Because I, I thought it was either going to be a semiconductor or a like right, Foxconn esque factory. Um, but now you're going to have one in Oregon, and now you're going to have another one on the West Coast. You're going to have Stop two on the West complaining. Coast. Stop complaining. Oh, no, I'm not complaining at all. What? It's good. No, I, I'm saying it is Are good. Are you saying that because we have two on the West Coast and you only have one over there? Are you <laughs> no, jealous? I'm, just, I'm just wondering if the reason why they're building... Are you jealous of all these building... data centers we got going on over here? No, I'm wondering if they're building so many of them so that they can keep the latency low. Well, good. No, that's fine. I, I don't care what the real root reason is if it's latency or if it's just you know sheer storage room or i mean latency would probably be the first thing just this week i've gotten a couple times where siri couldn't help me with something really simple like i'd say you know set a timer for five minutes mm -hmm. and then she'd think and and i'm on wi-fi at home and she would go i'm sorry i can't help you right now and i know that's because wow. Her servers are getting pounded. That's not because I didn't say it correctly. It's not because she didn't understand me. You know, it shows a preview of what I said. Mm -hmm. It's purely those okay. servers that aren't, you know, getting back in time or whatever. Look, it creates jobs for people. If anything, that's great. Job creation. Hey, so, all for it. Not complaining. Uh, are you an Orbitz user? It depends if they have the lowest price. Do they? Apparently, if you're on a Mac, they freaking don't. <laughs> so what's up with this? This is crazy. I think this is another 9 to 5 Mac article. Mm -hmm. um, this was just uncovered that Orbitz by default, if you're coming in from a Mac operating system, mm -hmm. it will charge you upwards of 20 to $30 more, 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 more wow. per hotel. Wow. And this is proven? This mm -hmm. isn't, oh, that's, I don't like that. That's awesome. Good job, guys. <laughs> I know you're smart, you know, and you're thinking, hey, if they're coming in from a Mac, clearly they got cash to spend. So who's, who's going to be the wiser? Yeah, <laughs> boo on Orbitz for that. That's crazy. What I would like to try is going into Orbitz 
on the Windows side of my Mac. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it depends. I'm, I'm I guess sure it would just be the use. If they're going by user, user agents, agent. then it would just say Windows. It's not going to know the hardware. Hmm. And then I would really stick it to you in your face, Orbits. <laughs> wow, you getting pissed. Well, that's that's crazy. It is. Charge different prices based on the user agent? Like, what if they did this by the browser? Oh, You know, yeah. like, you're coming in off Android 2.0, gingerbread or whatever, so clearly you have no money because you just bought a feature phone, so we're going to, you know, discount you or something like that. I mean, using Opera and a Nokia N95, they'll give yeah, you the room for free. Clearly, we feel sorry for you. Wow. We will discount you all of the charges so you can go buy yourself a new phone. <laughs> all right, well, let's move on to apps before we go. Uh, mine this week is a Tron Legacy second screen for the iPad. This is a freaking cool idea. What it does, uh, they have this for, I think, Bambi. Uh, of the Blu-ray. What you can do is you can hook up your Blu-ray player to the internet and you can connect the app to hey, your Blu-ray player. That? Aren't most Blu-ray players already networkable? Well, they are, but well, well, hold on. This is cool. What you can do <laughs> is that you can the, the app will communicate with your Blu-ray player and then in real time as the, um, as the movie plays, your iPad will show you sketches and different things about oh, the film. Oh, the extra content that would be like on the second disc or what have you? Well, yeah, but it's done in real time as you're watching the movie. Whereas uh, what you have to do now is there are these intrusive ways of doing it where like the movie will stop. It'll, yeah. it'll, it'll sort of um, tangent off, play something, and then go back. The Harry Potter ones do that. Which is um, fine, but you know what kind kind of does that is the HBO Go app. It will okay. you have like a timeline underneath what you're watching, and it plays like or it's got interviews and little um, notes and everything from the director or the script. But anytime you click on one of those underneath, it stops the video up top from playing. So. Oh, cool. I I don't know. It it feels just like what you're saying. It feels intrusive. Yeah. Um, you know, if I just want to watch the thing all the way through and then maybe I'll watch the extra content and then somebody else clicks on the extra content underneath and it's <laughs> freaking stopping the show every five minutes. It's really annoying. <laughs> yeah. But it's sort of a precursor to some of the technology they're working on now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's cool. And if you can't communicate with a Blu-ray player, it'll it'll know where you are in the movie by listening. Hmm. And hmm. so it's it's cool. It's it's something interesting. Disney, um, as I know, they are as far as I know, they have Tron Legacy and Bambi. I don't know if there are any others out. I think the Lion King. Oh, has one. so it's not it's not like a holistic app that you can load these in. It, every movie is an individual app, so it's yeah. pretty much like they made an app out of that extra features DVD, you know, or mm -hmm. the second disc. Mm -hmm. They just put into an interactive app. Yep, and it's free. Well, that's not bad. Yeah. All right. What's yours? So mine is surprise, surprise, the podcast app. It just <laughs> came out uh, what yesterday or the day before. Um, but I know we talked a lot about it, and it's I, it's pretty much what it says. Um, like I said before, it's it's a lot like the iBooks app, where mm -hmm. you have a library of ev all your subscriptions and shows or videos that are downloaded. But then there's also a hookup to the iTunes store, and it flips around, and you can search for whatever featured, or you can search by name, and then subscribe or download directly. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I was finding, and I don't know if this is because I'm on iOS 6, or if it's actually kind of buggy in its first iteration, but when you search for stuff uh, in the catalog, in the app, yeah. you search, and then you... Uh, you click on a on a podcast and then go back to the search menu. The the actual search bar is like merged or overlaid with the top kind of menu bar. Oh, so that's interesting. the bar where it says library, you know, mm -hmm. there's a back uh, back to your library is actually overlaid on top of the search bar. So anytime you hit the search bar, it hits the library button instead, and it keeps switching back and forth. And 
Um, that was kind of annoying as I was trying to, you know, subscribe, search for and then subscribe multiple podcasts. I had to literally switch back and forth to my library, to the catalog, to my library, because this button is in the way of the search box. And okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing that, but um, yeah, that So maybe that's just because I'm on iOS 6 and... Oh. There's a lot of interface differences, in, especially with the stores in iOS 6. Okay. All the iTunes and app stores are all kind of revamped, so it might just be my operating system fighting with this app. Yeah. All right, uh, we done? I think so. This was supposed to be a short show again. <laughs> oh, what? We went a little long? We're oh, well. We're at 50 minutes. Oh, man. We just love talking about this stuff. We do, you know. We do. And our, our our listeners are awesome, and they send us emails. We didn't have any this week. We didn't have any. I know, but that's um, okay. Yeah. But if you want to contact us, if you want to tell us how we're doing, first off, yes, please leave a review on iTunes. Um, we love that. We want to know what people think of us. What can we improve yep. on? Mm-hmm. That's always what we want to know: is what can we improve on? If you don't send us anything, then we're just going to do the same old. But then shtick. we're right. It's just be an exercise in futility. <laughs> we're just perfect. Or that, or we are clearly perfect and there's nothing, <laughs> no room for improvement. But if you do want to tell us how much we suck, you can send us tweets. I am tweets. at Star Mike. Yes, tweets. I am at Star Mike. Casey is K- Casey Queso, K A C E Y K A S O, the Casey, not the cheese. <laughs> you can, um, you can, subs- no, wait. I was going to say subscribe to our Twitter feed. I'm like, nobody does that. Sure. Why not? You <laughs> Infin- can try and subscribe. Infinite Loop TV is our Twitter ID, and you can send us an email to the Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com. We're yeah. also on Facebook. We're also on Google. We're all over the place. It's really not hard to find. Nope. All right. Oh, should we, I guess we should tell everybody about the other show we're doing. Oh, yeah. So we we had a new uh, inaugural episode this past Monday for mm-hmm. our new show. Tell everybody about it. Um, it's about our other other passions. Um, gaming. Specifically with MMOs and RPGs and all things pretty and fantasy and whatnot. <laughs> we'll probably talk about other games, too, as they come and go. But... Um, it was a lot of fun. We had uh, quite a few viewers for a uh, first episode for mm-hmm. an, a, a show that nobody knew even existed until about an hour beforehand. Yeah. But um, talked about games we're playing now, what we like, what got us into gaming, new releases since we do the show on Monday. And everybody knows that Tuesday is new game release day. Mm-hmm. So that's convenient. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, just, I mean, a lot of gaming stuff. Um, it's called The Quest Log. Likewise, it's The Quest Log uh, on Twitter, mm-hmm. The Quest Log Show at gmail.com, mm-hmm. uh, on Google Plus, all over the place. So if you have any um, comments or suggestions, you know, what, what are you guys playing? What games do you want us to review or talk about? Do you have gripes and whatever MMO or, you know, console game that you're playing right now that maybe we should, I don't know, vent or expose or (laughs) air for you, um, hit us up. All right. Sounds good. All right. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. I like Max. And? And games. All right. Bye.